Hi everyone, my name is Mark. I'm an instructor here at AeroGuard. Today we're going to be learning about departure procedures. There's three different departure procedures. Standard instrument departures, obstacle departures, and then diverse vector area departures. So today here in the sim, we're going to practice the Deer Valley 1 departure. Let's get, let's get for takeoff. All right, hey guys, welcome back. So as mentioned, we're gonna be talking about the three different departure procedures that you can get on your IFR clearance on your next flight, okay? So the first one we'll talk about is we're gonna go over the SIDS, Standard Instrument Departure Procedures. SIDS are designed to get your airplane to the route phase of the flight safely and also reduce pilot and uh, ATC workloads. Now, you can either accept or reject a SID, whether or not you wanna fly. The next one we're going to talk about is uh, obstacle departure procedures. Obstacle departure procedures um, get your airplane to the en route phase of the flight over terrain in a safe manner. Uh, here at Deer Valley, I like to fly the Deer Valley 1 departure. Okay? Diverse vector area, the next one is diverse vector area. Diverse vector area is uh, assigned headings given by ATC on departure. So let's say, for example, um, we're going to take off runway 25 left here at Deer Valley. ATC says uh, on departure, turn right heading 340. Okay, so we're going to, after we depart, take off, turn right heading 340, maintain that out, maintain that heading until ATC tells something else. Okay, now let's go a little bit deeper into uh, off school departure procedures. So pull out your four flights and pull up the Deer Valley 1 departure. Welcome back. So I hope you pull out your four flight and pull up the Deer Valley 1 obstacle departure procedure because you're gonna to need to follow along with this one, okay? So <clears throat> this is a very popular uh, practice, uh, obstacle departure that we like to do here at Deer Valley. Um, depending upon your airport, you might, they might also have another obstacle departure procedure. But in general, let's just look at the Deer Valley 1 departure today. Okay, so again, we talked about Deer Valley 1, uh, the obstacle departure gets us from the airport to the en route phase of our flight safely. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple things that we need to be aware of. First one is if you do not get the get your obstacle departure clearance in your IFR clearance, you can fly this one. According to the AIM 5-2-9, um, you do not have to have an obstacle departure procedure assigned your clearance in order to fly it. If it's at the airport that you're departing from, you can fly it on your own without a clearance on an IFR flight plan. Okay. The next thing that I want to cover is takeoff minimums. Takeoff minimums are very important uh, because we need to be able to meet certain climb gradients or visibility requirements in order to legally fly uh, obstacle departure procedures. Okay, so let's say the scenario is we're going to take off runway 25 left uh, on the Deer Valley 1. Okay, so if you go to the takeoff minimums, um, it says standard with a minimum climb of 451 feet per nautical mile to 2,800. Okay, stop there for a second. What is standard? Standard means uh, it's a couple different things. All right, it depends on what kind of uh, rules you're operating under, okay? So we have part 91 and then part 121 slash 135. So uh, during our training flights, we're operating under part 91 so standard for part 91, you can take off in zero, zero visibility. Is that safe? Probably not, okay? Now, if you are uh, flying for an airline, maybe SkyWest or a part 135 charter operations, uh, standard means a couple different things. So if you have um, one to two engines, the standard visibility is one statute mile, okay? Now, let's say you have three or more engines, three to four engines on your airplane. 
you get standard means one half statute mile visibility. Okay, so it's important uh, when you're pre-flighting yourself for your IFR flight uh, to take a look at the weather. Take a look at the METAR. Look at the TAF. Okay. All right. So now let's dive into the uh, 451 feet per nautical mile to 2,800. Now, what the heck is feet per nautical mile? Why can't it just be feet per minute? Well, I want you to go to the terminal procedures. I'm going to teach you how to convert from feet per nautical mile to feet per minute. Okay. Okay. So make sure you pulled out your terminal procedures in your foreflight. If you turn to page 19 uh, in the terminal procedures in foreflight, it's going to have a climb slash descent table. Uh, this is uh, it's lots of numbers, looks complex, but it's pretty easy. I'll teach you how to use it. Okay. So again, we have 451 feet per nautical mile to 2,800. Again, okay, we need to convert from feet per nautical mile to feet per minute. So. Uh, as you've calculated your, your uh, top of climb, your ground speed, what you're going to do is you're going to start with your feet per nautical mile. So we find uh, 451. We're going to have to uh, esti guesstimate between 425 and 480. You take those two numbers, you're going to divide by two. Then you're going to go over to your ground speed. Let's say your ground speed today is 90 knots. Okay. So we're going to go between 425 and 480 over to um, where 90 knots goes down to. So it's between 640 and 715. So we're gonna take those two numbers, uh, add them together and divide by two, okay, to guesstimate. So <clears throat> with that number, we now have our uh, feet per minute, okay? So if we're able to meet that feet per minute based on our climb performance with density altitude, pressure altitude of the current time of your flight, uh, we can then calculate and estimate that we can legally fly the Deer Valley One departure if we're able to meet the feet per minute after converting from feet per nautical mile to feet per minute. Okay. Um, now there's a way out. There's a way out. So if you go back to the Deer Valley One departure, let's say it's a really hot day and you're not able to meet the climb gradient. Okay. Then the altitude's hot. High. So if you continue um, reading in the takeout minimums for only 25 left, uh, at the end after 2,800, it says, or a 1,500 foot ceiling and three statute mile visibility for climb and visual conditions. So that's your excuse, that's your way out. If you're not able to meet the climb grade based upon the feet per minute and feet per nautical mile uh, conversion. So that's why it's really important um, when you are uh, pre-flighting yourself for your flight to check the performance of the airplane based on the current conditions. Um, here in here Deer Valley, um, it's pretty clear most of the year, so uh, it's always good to check the ATIS, check the METAR before you get going. But that's why we have, that's why they also have the excuse of that 1500 foot ceiling and three statute miles because you can climb around the mountains, the terrain here at Deer Valley in visual conditions instead of taking off into the clouds not knowing where those mountains are and accidentally hitting them. All right, guys, thanks again for joining us on our presentation about departure procedures. I encourage you to get with your instructor and study more about the departure procedures in the AIM 5-2-9. There's a lot more information about that in there that um, we didn't cover today, but you can study. That's my challenge for you. And as always, please like, subscribe, and share our awesome videos. Have a great day, and fly safe.